Hi, today we're going to talk a little bit about Chuck Data and how to execute identity resolution directly in your Dataverse account with it. Uh, first, let's t talk a little bit about the Imperity Identity Resolution algorithm that Chuck has used. Imperity has been around for about a decade, serving enterprise companies and refining one of the world's best identity resolution algorithms it, that's powered by machine learning. So, what the way Imperity ID Res works is that you apply a series of semantic tags to your data. So you have data sets from different sources like e-commerce, point of sale, uh, you know, web vi visits, all kinds of things. And each of those has totally different schemas. And what you do is you apply a semantic tag to that, and then the machine learning algorithm generates a, a robust identity graph. So, in this example here. Um, we have, you know, Alexander Samuelson. You can see that uh, st what Stitch did is it took data from their the loyalty data, point of sale, Wi-Fi, e-commerce, and created a standardized table with each column representing one of the semantic d types of identity data representing this person. And so you can see, you know, sometimes sh she uses a nickname. Maybe she got married, changed her last name, a couple of different emails, and etc. And what Imperity does is that we run up to 45 different machine learning algorithms depending on the data that's available. And we generate these really transparent ID graphs that let you see exactly all the links we were able to generate and how confident we were with them. The problem with that is that today, the only way to, to use that has been using Imperity's big enterprise platform. Uh, Chuck is making it possible for you to run that in, directly in your Databricks account. So let's dive into that. First, we'll start in our Databricks account. You can see here, if I go to my catalog, I have a data set that we're gonna call, that is just called Chuck Demo. So if I look down here, I have a schema called Bronze, and in that, there are three different tables, e-commerce profiles, loyalty profiles, point of sale profiles. Each of these has a different schema. So if I you know, look over here, you can see this one has a unique key for system ID and a bunch of you know PII in it. Um, uh, loyalty, same thing, but it's a customer ID with a totally different set of formats and fields. And so what Stitch is going to be able to do is take these and create a new unified data set. Um, and, and it will run directly in your Databricks account. So how does that work? Let's take a quick look at how Chuck runs. Chuck is an open source uh, CLI tool that runs locally in, on your computer and interacts with your Databricks account via your Databricks API tokens and REST APIs. So none of your data gets provided to Imperity. Uh, all Imperity does is handle providing you access to the machine learning algorithm that, that is our identity algorithm. So whenever you kick off a job uh, to two stitch tables, it provisions the algorithm as a jar file and runs that as a job directly in your Databricks account. So let's dive into Chuck and see how we can set, that, set all this up. All right, let's hop into Chuck here. So we just run Chuck, and Chuck is a command line tool. So like most of them, it has a library of fixed uh, commands. So you can, if you type slash, you'll see an autocomplete there. If I type slash help, you'll see the full catalog of commands. These are all tools that Chuck, if you ask natural language questions, it will use these tools to do all sorts of things in your Databricks account. Work with your catalogs and your tables, help you craft SQL, all kinds of stuff. Today, we're gonna focus here on, this, on the stitch work. Um, so, the, you know, the, the first thing to do is validate your conne connection and make sure that you have all of the access you need. If you type slash status, it'll let you know the current context that Chuck is in. So it'll tell you which workspace you're in. It'll tell you um, that you are, uh, you know, what catalog and schema it's going to default to. Although if you name a different catalog or schema, it will look for that. It'll tell you what model you're using. And all of this runs directly against your Databricks account. So if I just type slash list models, you can see I have all the foundation models here, but if I have my own hosted model, that would be that would work too. But uh, I should be able to just interact with Chuck using natural language. So I can just say, what customer data do I have? And it will presume I'm talking about the current active catalog since I didn't specify it. And now it's gonna take a look at my catalog and decide how to help me deal with that. Um, Different uh, models will give you different behaviors. So you can see here it, it uh, you know, wanted to confirm this time. So now you can see it's decided, oh, I'm gonna use the tools to profile the data and look for uh, PII and 
that sort of thing. So what it, when, it, when it looked at the catalog, it said, oh, I found three tables that look like they have customer data, as we would expect. And then for each, it actually evaluated the schemas and looked at them and recommended the type of data. So this, th these are the semantic tags that we would use in Stitch when, um, and they, the machine learning algorithms will, will be able to use these uh, tags to be able to decide uh, you know, uh, how to run the identity resolution algorithm. And you can see down here, Chuck gave me a nice, friendly, summarized response. So I, I'm just gonna say, hey, let's stitch those tables together. Now what Chuck's gonna do is it's going to propose a job. Uh, and the first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna reevaluate the data and construct a definition of a job for me to double check before we kick it off. Because Stitch can run for quite a bit and use a reasonable amount of compute. And so you wanna be able to verify that it's using the right configuration. So you can see here that it rescanned those tables. And what it did is it created a config file and it, it, you know, on the volumes that has the job configuration. This is useful for automating this later. Um, but you can see it found the three tables and now I can look at each and as, as before, double check in these parentheses, you know, you have the uh, semantic tags that it identified for each. You know, for the sake of this, uh, uh, I'm gonna say, yep, this is all good. All right, but I do have the option to say, you like remove the, the tag from this field or you know add tags if I miss them um, but I'm gonna go ahead and say for now that this is gonna work and I'll just tell it to launch now it's gonna give you a warning here because what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna create a new schema if you don't have it for stitch outputs it's gonna create a table called unified coalesced which is all of the nodes and the unified scores all the edges of my graph and um, you know and it, it, and it will actually you know run that machine learning job so I'll say confirm, I want it to run, and now it's actually gonna reach into my Databricks account and kick off a job. Now you can see here that what it did was it uh, kicked off this, it's telling me all, all about what it did here. So it created, it used this, this config, it created a job with this run ID, and it's telling me it's gonna create that new schema, these new tables, and, and the cool thing is, is it creates a notebook that is similar information to the, uh, uh, Stitch report that I showed at the beginning from the Imperity UI. So I'll be able to evaluate my uh, my results. So let's go look in my Databricks account and I'll, we'll see the job running and then we'll take a look at the results. All right, now we're back in Databricks. If I come to job runs, you can see here, there is a new job that we just kicked off and it's kicked, it is now running. It is running the machine learning jar that has uh, the Imperity identity resolution model in it. Um, like any good cooking show, I've already completed one. So you can see here that this one ran and completed a little while ago. And you can see there's a bunch of output and information about what it did to run. But the end result is if I go back here to my catalog and I go to the Chuck demo catalog, there is now a stitch outputs uh, schema. And you can see in here that just like in the Imperity UI, we have a new table that has all of the, uh, a column for each of the different semantic types that we found the Imperity ID, data source, and of course, we have a separate table here that is the scores. So, you know, the uh, the identity of each of the data sets and then the confidence score that represents the data between each. The other cool thing that this does is it creates its own report. So if I go to my workspace, I should have a uh, stitch report here. And so if I look at the stitch report, uh, this automatically generates based on the data sets and populates a bunch of things in it. I won't go through every single step, but the first thing you can do is double check that it is pointing at the new data table that has your, your nodes in it, so the unified coalesce table. And then you have the opportunity here to uh, change some names. So right here you have the, data, the table on the left, but you could on the right say, you know, I could just say point of sale, and it will, for the rest of the report down here, it will uh, give them more friendly names than the fully qualified name. Uh, but you can skip this step too. But the, the important part is when, when once your stitch job is complete, you should just be able to hit run all and it will uh, complete, compute all of the different cells in here. And you can expand each to see what kind of queries it's running. But you can do basic stuff in this example here where we had 140 million rows of data and we found 79 million clusters. So that means that within that 140 million rows of data, we found around 80 million people represented. Um, and then you can kind of dive into all of the different results here, the duplication rates for things and um, as well as the, the amount of uh, profiles that went from you know unknown to known. So for example here you can see that there was a reduction in the partially known ones, which means 
you know, you have some data where you have no information on them, but if you have like just names, that's a partially known person. But if you have a full profile, then, you know, you would, uh, you know, be able to do better personalization and contact them in more channels. And you can see here that in the before we had more uh, partially known and in the after we have far more fully known because those full clusters now have far more information. There was a pretty massive jump there. Uh, now I'll be able to better personalize or better analyze these users from all their different behaviors. You can see here that there's a bunch of other sort of breakdowns of the shift between known to unknown to anonymous to partially known to known. You can see the dupe rates by different sources. So some of these have very low dupe rates, uh, like loyalty, which is normal. Some of these have higher dupe rates. Um, you can get in here and, um, you know, kind of look at these different counts, breakdowns by source, um, you know, the general cluster size within each, you know, um, you can kind of, you can look at uh, overlap between different data, sor data sources. So, you know, records based on how many different data sets they're in. Um, and then I think my favorite down here is you can get a nice overlap diagram and you can see here of all the different data sets, like how, what, what level of overlap each has. The, the point is that, you know, each of these has uh, some information that tell you about the results of the, uh, of the stitch output. And if you look at any of these and you want to see what happened there, there's a little eye uh, over here where it's hidden the, the code, but you can actually look at it and see, you know, what sort of queries we ran in order to get these stats out of it. The, the, the goal here is um, a, you know, that you can really understand at a glance what the stitch result, what the identity resolution algorithm did to your data. Um, if you would like a video deep diving into this report, you know, say something in the comments there. Otherwise, uh, uh, you know, th this is meant to be flexible for you to be able to easily, you know, dive into it and, and as deeply as you want to. All right. So if you want to try Chuck out, uh, you can do it. It's free. It's an open source CLI. Um, so you can install it if you have Mac you, and you use Homebrew as a package manager. It has a brew tap. Uh, if you have, if you just want to use Python, it is in pip. Um, in terms of sort of prerequisites, you're going to need a Databricks account with a, you know, the ability to act, interact via the, your API key. Uh, you're going to need full access to at least a catalog so that you can create managed schemas and volumes. And um, you're also going to be able to need to be able to create compute clusters. All of this happens with your API key, so this you know reflects what Chuck is able to do. It is the same access that your API key has. Um, you also need to be aware that the Stitch does you know use a reasonable amount of compute. It can it, it distributes the machine learning uh, across a lot of different VMs. So sometimes your cloud quotas can uh, be a little too low. So I know Azure has defaults that you know that are quite a bit lower so you'll need to adjust your quotas for those to 160 plus um, um, machines and then um, if you would like to try sample uh, try this out with some sample data the uh, marketplace has a, um, a data set in it um, that I created just for this that's exactly that, that, that's a much smaller data set than that 140 million it's about 10 million rows if you go on the Databricks Marketplace, you, there is a Chuck Data sample data. You, so if you want to try this out without using your own data yet, uh, you can add these. You just click Get Instant Access. There's a couple of data sets in here. Uh, I will say uh, it create that creates a delta sharing uh, catalog. You will need to copy them into a schema in a normal catalog because you can't write to delta shares. Um, and finally, when you try it out, if you need any sort of, you, you want to give us feedback or you need support, uh, we have a user Discord. Links is in the description. The uh, chuck supported mparity.com if you want to use email uh, or slash bug directly in Chuck. Um, leave a comment if there's other questions you have or videos uh, that you'd like to see. You know, I'd be happy to do a deeper dive into the Stitch results or the algorithm itself or the other different ways you can use Chuck. Looking forward to seeing what you all do with Chuck. Thanks for watching.